Hey friends, welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. Today I've got a lot of things I wanna prep up for my freezer so that I'm ready to go for the month. These are what I like to consider my conveniency items, things that are kind of half prepared for me um, that I can just grab and go. So the first thing that we're going to be putting together here is some smoothie packs. I've made these off and on through the years. And basically all it is is different ingredients for a smoothie in a freezer bag. And we can just dump it right into the blender with a little bit of milk or another liquid and we've got a smoothie. It's really convenient when you have children that can possibly do that themselves so that it's all ready to go for them. Everything's been washed and cut and all put together. This time I decided to go with more of a tropical smoothie flavor. Obviously you can go crazy, go wild with the different types of smoothies that you do. You could do different variations if you do a banana base for a lot of them. And then what we often do is I'll throw some milk, some almond milk, some yogurt, um, a more protein focused item into these whenever I go to make them and of course I have little hands asking for strawberries as I was cutting all of this up. I also did some pineapple. I need to get myself a good pineapple core. I don't have one of those and I haven't had one for years but if you have a good suggestion on something that cuts pineapple well let me know in the comments so everything i just chopped up to a size that would be helpful to my blender obviously you don't have to be super particular with this because it's all going to get blended up anyways and whenever i'm cutting up fruit for smoothie packs like this i just know that at least i know there's no additives no added sugar um, no preservatives and I'm able to make a smoothie pack that I personally know I cut up all of those ingredients and I know what's in them. Now to store these, I'm just layering the fruit into little baggies, freezer bags, and I'm going to freeze them by laying them flat because if I were to tip them up, all the fruit would end up in the bottom of the bag and it would be kind of like a big balled up mess of fruit and it's just not as nice to store in my freezer so I definitely like to try to lay them all flat and get them frozen that way first so that when I store them in my freezer I can just stack them up and nice and neat. So I cut up the pineapple and the strawberries and then I had some bananas and I wanted to use them up completely so I just evenly distributed them between the bags and then I got to this three berry blend from Costco. You guys might remember, I can't remember if I showed it in my last Costco haul or not, but this has blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries in it. So very like antioxidant friendly, awesome mixture of stuff. And it was stuff that I didn't already have in my smoothie packs. So as you can see, I'm just going to seal them all off and then I'm going to put them into my freezer. So next we are going to make an absolute favorite in our house. And I knew I was gonna have to make a huge batch of these because one or even a double batch will only last us a week if these are around and they are gluten-free blueberry muffins and I knew I was going to have to make a ton of them. I think till the day was through I made at least, it was, it was over 60 muffins um, which is great. We've been able to pull these out of the freezer and warm them up for snacks and breakfast and things like that and this recipe is so so simple. It does use a gluten-free flour blend that is a like one for one so you could use regular flour and make this exact same recipe and these turn out so so nice and obviously you can make these into a mini muffin form a jumbo muffin form I just went ahead and used regular cupcake size tins to make these and I also did put muffin or cupcake papers into the tins because I felt like they would freeze a little bit better in those papers and then reheat a little bit better without the muffin completely falling apart and another reason that I like this recipe is there is no crumb on top or streusel on top so they're just really really simple they puff up nice they aren't flat 
um, they just have such a nice rise on them. In our house, we often watch which type of oils we are consuming, especially because we do enjoy eating out as a family occasionally. So I like to save the times when we're going to consume seed oils and things like that for the most part when we are away from home. So at home, I love using um, avocado oil, olive oil, and those sorts of things. So this recipe, I'm actually using avocado oil instead of vegetable oil. I think the recipe that I will link below, the one I followed to do this, I believe she uses vegetable oil. And so that was just a little healthy swap I made as well as using cane sugar in this um, to make sure that it's not a highly processed sugar. And then I also added in some vanilla extract. That's something else for some reason was not in this recipe. And I just feel like <laughs> if you're going to bake something, it has to have vanilla extract in it. I very rarely bake something without vanilla in it. My mom is the same way and I definitely get it from her. And then you take a little bit of the dry ingredients and save them aside and then you toss your blueberries in that. And this helps them to not sink to the bottom of your muffin, which it worked perfectly with this recipe. Um, it just helps to coat those blueberries so they don't sink down on the bottom. And I was so excited to use these blueberries because these were from last summer and obviously we're creeping closer to blueberry season once again here in Pennsylvania. And so I wanted to use up the last couple bags of blueberries that I have in the freezer from last year. And you're gonna go ahead and fold in those blueberries. You don't wanna put them in with your mixer's whisk or attachment because they will smash the blueberries and you end up with very blue muffins, <laughs> but you won't have those individual pockets of blueberry that kind of pop in your mouth when you eat a blueberry muffin. This is a thicker batter for the blueberries, but just making sure that they are filled about three fourths of the way full will create a nice rise on these muffins. I did get started on the muffins a little bit earlier in my day because I knew I'd be baking them through the day while I was making a few other things. So the next thing was a highly requested item from one of my daughters and that was chicken noodle soup. They love my homemade chicken noodle soup and it is just super handy to have in the freezer for lunches. It's something that we can pull out, heat up. We don't really need anything else added to it because it has the noodles in it and obviously the protein and some veggies and broth. So good for their tummies. I use my homemade broth to make them and so it has, um, it's almost more like a bone broth because I do cook it for a long time before preserving it. And so I'm going to chop up my carrot and onion and put some olive oil in the bottom of my kettle pot, whatever you like to call this, this thing. <laughs> and then I'm gonna saute all of those yummy veggies in the bottom. It just gives them such a great flavor, helps to kind of open up their flavor before you start boiling them with the soup. And I'm just using a regular white onion in this. Obviously you could use a sweet onion, you could use a purple onion. I don't have a true recipe for this. That's why I'm kind of going into explanation with it. So I just cut up a carrot. I didn't even measure it. I cut up, um, I don't know how much carrot I cut up. I think it was like five carrots, something like that into small bite-sized pieces. Again, I think I used half of a large onion, and then I'm going to be also pulling from my big bag of chopped up celery from Azure Standard. That's so convenient for making soups because it's already chopped up for you, and all you gotta do is throw it into the pot. And as I am cooking up these veggies, I'm pulling out muffins and reloading my muffin tins because like I said, I made a lot this day. And whenever you are prepping for the freezer, I really encourage you to sit down and write out everything you're gonna be prepping and kind of figure out your timeline. Um, it helps a lot to have something going in the oven while you have something going on the stove top and even maybe in the air fryer, you know, utilize being able to run multiple appliances at the same time and you're gonna really knock out a lot of cooking in one day or one session if you can kind of schedule out your time on what is cooking where, if that makes sense. So once the veggies 
are softened up quite a bit and I did make sure to add oil as they went because I didn't want them to stick to the bottom of the pan. I threw in a couple frozen cubes of my frozen garlic that I showed you a few videos ago, how I freeze those up. It's so nice. I don't have to get out my garlic mincer and all of that. They're ready to go. So I just let them cook for just a very short amount of time. And then I'm going to add in my home canned chicken. I want to say a great swap for that home canned chicken is a rotisserie chicken from the store. You're just going to shred up the chicken and put it right into the pot. And then I'm also adding in my home canned broth. And that's really how easy it is. You can just really dump soups together so quickly with some home canned vegetables or even store bought um, frozen vegetables are a great option as well if you don't have your own home canned veggies. And then I showed you all this in my last Costco haul, but I found these noodles at a giant food store in my area and they are gluten-free. We do eat a lot of gluten-free in our house. We're not 100% gluten-free, but a lot of gluten-free options. And these are egg noodles. And my husband and I both grew up eating them in a lot of dishes and this turned out really well. I will say this. I think I would not have cooked the whole soup quite as long. Oh, I also threw in a jar of home canned corn, the Amish style of canning corn with a tomato slice in the top. Makes that taste so good and not canned. Um, but the noodles, I think I would have definitely um, not cooked them quite as long. They needed to be thrown in more last minute than what I did. So they ended up a little softer. So the next time I definitely will do that. And, um, I also added in some parsley as well. You can throw in any type of herbs in a soup like this. Um, and just play with the flavors and things that your family really enjoys. And then to freeze these muffins, I just went ahead and did nine muffins per bag. That's what fit into these gallon Ziploc freezer bags really, really well. Um, and we are able with the muffin papers to pull out the amount of muffins we want to heat up at one time. And that makes it super convenient for us to just use what we need to and not thaw everything out at once. To freeze the chicken noodle soup, I wanted to freeze it in more like quart sized portions. So I have these freezer containers that are from Amazon. I actually have three different sizes. I will leave them linked below. They're so nice and you can reuse them if you want to um, for freezing things like this, like soup. You can freeze soup in freezer bags as well. Um, it's just, I find it's just a little easier to get the soup out in a container like this because I can run a little bit of warm water over the bottom of them. I flip them upside down and I'm able to pop that big chunk of soup out into a pot and just heat it up. So the next thing that we're going to be prepping is some breakfast burritos. This is something I used to do a lot and I haven't done it probably in at least a year. And my daughters were thrilled when I told them I was doing this. And I am going to be using these tiny little baby bell peppers because they're extra sweet. They're sweeter than a regular bell pepper. So I just cut them up into rings. And then I'm also using a purple onion because I had it left over from another recipe. And purple onions are so delicious. They have such a distinct flavor. And I thought they would make a really fun sort of Southwest flavor in these breakfast burritos. So I'm just going to saute all of that up in some olive oil um, or avocado oil. I'm not sure what I use this time, but either way, it's still really yummy in a savory dish like this. And I'm just going to fry all of that up until everything is to the point of softened to the texture that I want. Some people like to have a bit more of a crunch in those bell peppers. Others like them really soft. So you can make them to whatever texture your family enjoys the most. Then I took the eggs and cracked them out and I tried to kind of guess about how many eggs I wanted per wrap. I feel like I did about an egg and a half per wrap and then I like to make some nice fluffy scrambled eggs whenever it comes to a good breakfast burrito. So to make that happen, the secret is some sour cream. So I'm going to be putting some sour cream in with these eggs. And I'm also gonna be adding in my buttery steakhouse seasoning. Surprise, surprise, right guys? <laughs> um, 
I love that seasoning if you're new around here. I use it in almost every video somewhere, but you could definitely add in your own seasonings. You could put in onion powder, garlic powder. Um, you could take this point to really flavor it the way that you like it. If you wanna do like a smoked paprika, you could kind of steer the flavor of the burrito in the direction you want with those seasonings because I'm not putting much other seasoning in it besides obviously the veggies and that type of thing. Once the peppers and things are finished cooking, um, I like to use the same pan because obviously it brings a lot of good flavor from those peppers. So I'm just going to put some grass fed butter in the bottom of my pan and then I'm going to dump in my egg mixture and just let that really cook up. This was about the max amount of eggs that I would put in to this cast iron. It really filled it up and it did take it a little while to actually cook the eggs up. So I next time I maybe would do it in two batches. I think it would have gone a bit faster for me, but either way, they turned out to be great fluffy eggs. And I like to lay out all of my tortillas. Um, not everybody may do it this way, but I just do because I feel like I can divide my ingredients out a bit better on the tortillas. These are a spinach and herb gluten-free tortilla. So they're just a little bit smaller than what I prefer, but because we eat mostly gluten-free and my one daughter really needs to, um, I wanted to make sure that this was a meal that everybody in the house can have. So I had pre-shredded some cheese and so I divided that out. I just used like a mixed white and yellow cheese and then I divided out the pepper and onion mixture as well. This just ensures I don't have any leftovers um, when I'm putting things on to the tortillas. So then after that, I like to put the eggs on top. That just helps to kind of pre-melt that cheese just a little bit before I wrap them up and put them into the freezer bag and get them good to go. So let's talk about reheating these. Um, I'm going to be wrapping these into tin foil. Don't use tin foil for a lot of things, but this particular item is easy to heat if it is already in tin foil because I can take it directly from the freezer, put it in the oven at 350, and I believe whenever I did it this week, I think I did it for about 40 minutes from frozen. Um, obviously, if you open it up and it's still cold in the middle, you can just roll it back up and throw it back into the oven. You could also heat these up in the microwave by just simply opening them up, taking them out of the tin foil, and uh, putting it in the microwave to heat up. Um, but if you are trying to avoid using your microwave quite as much, you can um, definitely do this tin foil trick and you've got a great little quick breakfast in the morning. You know, if you're getting ready, you can pop these in the oven while you're getting ready for the day and then they're ready to go for you and your family. So I hope that this video gave you a lot of inspiration. Let me know in the comments which recipe you liked the best. I love hearing from you all. Definitely subscribe if you're new. I'd love it if you joined my channel here and I'll see you all in my next video.